Hello, I'm Emmy Victor, host of our series, Investing in America, sponsored by the American Investment Council. Thanks for joining us as we better understand how the private equity industry supports jobs, strengthens retirements, and helps local communities. Today we explore building better businesses, and we're honored to be joined by Pam Hendrickson, Vice Chairman and COO of the Riverside Company. Pam, great to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Pam, what is the Riverside Company known for? So our company, which is a private equity firm, has spent the last over 30 years focused on investing in small companies. Our goal in every single investment is growth, growth in customers, growth in sales, growth in employees, and growth in value for all of our stakeholders. It doesn't matter whether it's a loan or a full-on buyout, we're always going to focus on growth. So Pam, when your firm Riverside invests in a business, how do you work with that company to ensure that it grows, hires new workers, and is better prepared for the future? So every time we buy a company, we know that what matters is that we have spurred growth at the finish line to create value, greater value for our investors. So for the companies we own, we go into every situation with a clear plan for how it can double or triple in size. If we can't identify that plan, we're just not going to invest. But when we do invest, we get going right away. Our operating partners work hand in hand with our management teams so that there's a template for growth. It could be new products, it could be new distribution channels. To give you an example, we have a company called Red Nucleus, which is in the pharmaceutical in industry. It's an e-learning company, and it trains sales forces for the technical and compliance issues around new products and new drugs like a vaccine, for example. In 2020, that company is going to spend 25% more as we grow it by adding new modules, new interactive videos. As a consequence, its profitability is going to drop, but we don't care because we see the long-term growth for that company. And would you be able to share with our viewers any examples of private equity success stories that extend beyond financial gains for your investors? Sure. Uh, let's, let's take a company based in Eugene, Oregon. It's called the Health and Safety Institute. And when we first invested in this company, it had 30 employees. And its sole focus was emergency care. How do you take care of someone if they've been hurt? But the mission of HSI was to make saving lives easier. So with growth in mind, we asked the management, well, why don't we train people so they don't get hurt in the first place? So we found a company and we added it on to HSI so that we could train people in the workforce how to stop people from getting hurt, or even if they were hurt, to immediately resuscitate them. So in one example, a woman was in a gym doing a weightlifting workout, and she was only 20 years old, and she had a heart attack. But the gym staff was able to resuscitate her because they had been trained by HSI. Pam, you spent 14 years of your career at Riverside. What have you learned about private equity that you wished policymakers and the overall public better understood? There are thousands of great stories about how patient capital and experiential or sector expertise benefits companies. But you just don't hear about them. At Riverside, we have investments in over 100 companies worldwide, and our goal is always to help them get bigger and better, because that's how we generate returns for our investors. And to me, that's what private equity is all about. Last year, you were named one of the most influential women in mid-market M&A by the Mergers and Acquisitions publication. What advice would you give young women working in private equity today? Probably the, the top two are be confident because if you have the job, you're clearly competent. The differentiator is whether you're willing to take risk, to step forward, to voice your opinion. You have to recognize that you're as smart as anyone else in the room. And without the confidence to speak up even early in your career, you're never going to have the opportunity to help your firm or yourself in the way you should. The other part of this is know the facts and practice, because when you know the facts, you will have immediately immediate credibility. 
And don't ever think that you're smarter than the next person and can wing it. Great athletes and great musicians got great because they practiced all the time. And you should do the same thing. Pam, that's really great advice for young women. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. It was a pleasure to see you, Emmy. And I hope you'll all join us next time for our series, Investing in America.